We've already had a look at two GTX 980s, so we thought we'd make it a trio with Gigabyte's offerings up next. <laughs> As usual, the box is well designed with plenty of branding about Gigabyte's new features, including what they call Flex Display. This basically means you can use up to four displays at any one time using any of the six different outputs. Inside the box you'll find the card, a quick start guide, two dual Molex tape and adapters, and a warranty information leaflet. The card itself, in my eyes, is very good looking. As you can see, it has a triple fan design and a black solid aluminium shroud. The card is pretty hefty with a lot of weight to it, meaning that it's fantastic at cooling that awesome GPU and it definitely needs the beautiful backplate it has. So as I just mentioned, on the back you will find one of the nicest backplates for a graphics card I have ever seen and the placement of the G1 logo is just perfect as it almost always avoids all tower heatsinks, making it visible for all to see. On the side of the card you'll find some exposed heatsink fins, a Windforce logo which once installed glows blue, and two 8 pin power connectors which are upside down, we'll talk more about that later. As I mentioned this card sports three fans, each are 80mm ribbed fans supposedly for better airflow, but since I still don't have that wind tunnel I'm gonna have to take Gigabyte's word for it. These fans are part of the card's Windforce heatsink design, which includes five thick copper heat pipes, a supposedly special fin architecture and of course that backplate which is adorned with the G1 gaming logo towards the rear of the card. The idea for this, besides structural rigidity, is to provide a bigger surface area for the heat to, to dissipate from, and from what I found in testing, it works very well. One thing to note with the card is that it includes two SLI fingers, which allow for up to 4-way SLI, which if you have the money and the motherboard to support it, is awesome. The rear I.O. is comprised of three full-size display ports, a DVI-I port for VGA use as well, with an adapter that you're going to have to purchase yourself, and a DVI-I output, a DVI-D output, and a single HDMI port. This is more than most cards have, which is really good, um, especially considering the Zotac cards and the MSI card that we tested um, only have one DVI port, so the inclusion of more choice here is always great. Moving on to the size of the card, this thing is long. Seriously long. Like, 12 inches long. It's also thin, as it doesn't extend much further than the rear I.O. plate, meaning that Gigabyte has opted to extend the length of the card rather than the width, which is definitely an interesting design choice. I just wanted to show you the power connectors quickly, to show that they're actually in, in an inverted position, making it somewhat easier to install and remove the cables, which is always a nice touch and something that we did see on the MSI 980 as well. Moving on to benchmarking, as you may already know, we use my personal gaming rig to test graphics cards, as it's a more real world and more likely to give you action numbers that you might actually be able to achieve on your own PC if you bought this card. The system is an AMD FX8120 a stock clock with 16GB of RAM. As always, we tested the cards with Bioshock Infinite, Battlefield 4, Crisis 3, Grid 2 and Unity in Heaven. We chose these as they're all modern, fairly hard to run titles that cover a good range of styles and genres, as well as throwing in a synthetic benchmark to mix it up just a little. I won't spend too long on the results, since as you can expect, they're pretty much identical to the two other 980s. Since this card's stock clock is just above 1.2GHz, it sits right in the middle between Zotax and MSI's offerings. If you want to see the results in more detail, hit pause and take a look. I included the maximums and the minimums as well if you're interested. It seems like Unage in Heaven favours this card setup as it cleared the other two by about 10 FPS. This could have been down to slight variances in the setup of my rig as the Zotac card cleared the MSI card by about 10 FPS as well. Um, but since I don't even have the other cards to try again, um, I have to say that this card just did better. In most games, it either sat above or pretty much the same as the Zotac card, as I believe the boost clock on both are very similar. Of course, these cards are only stock clocked, so if you wanted to, you could overclock the card and see what it's really made of. As Gigabyte mentioned on the back of the box about the new Gauntlet service, where they bin Windforce GPUs to a much higher standard than many others. To talk about temperatures a little, under load the card didn't even break a sweat, sitting at around 60 degrees constantly, or lower. Even in a hot room when the card didn't ramp up much more than 35-40%, to meaning it stayed relatively quiet. Although I do have to mention that the card, when I put it in my system, 
was rather loud. It did make my whole entire system considerably louder than even the R9280 that I run normally. This is something I really wasn't too impressed with, as I do like having a quiet-ish build. I noticed that in MSI Afterburner you can't adjust the fan curve to turn the fans fully off at any point, meaning that you're stuck with a noisy fan array spinning at around 12% no matter what. So for the awards, I'm going to give this a 4 for value for money. It's not the best value for money card on the earth, uh, that's probably the GTX 970 version, but for performance it's got to be a 5, it's fantastic, it's brilliant and I love it. For functionality it's a 4 because it is a little bit loud, and I would, as I said in all the other 980 videos, I would like to see some uh, full size display port to other connector adapters, as having a, at least 3 displays is better, but I still would like to see one. For style, the thing has got to get a 5. The backplate design is beautiful. Um, I really do like the actual shroud as well. It just it looks fantastic. And I do like the th uh, fact that it's thinner and longer as opposed to really wide. As I did have the Zotac card almost touch my side panel. Um, and for Titan Beam score, it's got to have a 4. It's fantastic. As I said, I love the style. But there are just a couple of things that I would like to see, and possibly even in a software update for that fan, um, where you can turn them fully off. That could be interesting, and I'd like to see Gigabyte implement that. Otherwise, this has definitely got to get the Gamer Approved Award. It's fantastic for gamers. If you got this money, um, you know, I definitely recommend splashing out on this as, as, as I said, it looks great, it performs well, and if you have a quiet optimized PC, then maybe you should have a look around for another one, but otherwise this thing looks the part and plays the part. So, thanks for watching this Titan GB video. If you liked it, please, please, please hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and if you have, let us know what you think of the videos. Let, you, let us know what you think of the quality. Is it going up, down, left, right, or whatever else, whatever other directions there are. And, uh, yeah, let us know in the comments down below. We really do try quite hard on these, so, yeah. Let us know in the comments down below if you'd ever buy one of these cards, or if you go for something more value for money oriented, like the GTX 970. Other than that, do you like this style? Um, you know, is it something that appeals to you, or would you rather have something more plain but just sounds a little bit quieter and is just maybe a little bit more performing? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Otherwise, as I said, subscribe, and we'll see you all in the next video. So thanks for watching this Tech Team GB video. You've probably seen enough of me already, so I'm gonna go away. Right after I say, if you haven't already liked or disliked, just let us know why in the comments down below as well. Um, check out some of our other videos, hopefully there'll be some somewhere around me. And then also, um, feel free to subscribe as well, that really helps us out, um, and yeah, obviously shows companies that you love us. So if you do love us, check us out on Facebook or Twitter, hopefully there will also be some stuff around here maybe. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much it from me, so we'll see you all in the next video.